here and today we're starting the intelligent AI series um, so to start off with and we're just gonna make a new object I'm gonna call it object main and uh, this is gonna be the only object we use in the whole entire thing so we're gonna make a few events just to start off with we're gonna make a create event a step event a draw event draw GUI event and don't think we need any other events. Oh yeah, a couple of alarms. Um, so we're gonna have alarm zero and alarm one. Uh, these are well, we don't actually need alarm zero. We can get rid of that. We'll just keep uh, alarm one. Even we'll keep alarm zero uh, for the moment, and that will control the time allowed on each generation. So we're going to start off with three variables. Uh, we'll start with the most important one, the steps. It's going to start on zero. Um, the steps is going to be how many generations have occurred. We're then going to have mini steps. Um, okay, so that puts a zero, and that is going to be the stage within the generation. We'll get onto that in a second. And the last one we're going to have is going to be population size, which I don't think we need to comment for that one, honestly. Um, we're going to start off with a population size of 200 because that's what I've previously used. We might change it, I don't know. We'll start with other. Um, in fact, let's let's make another one as well. Um, max time equals ten. So we'll say that that's ten seconds. Um, we'll just times it by room speed. So that is now ten seconds in game time. So this is the maximum time per generation. We're gonna work on that a bit later as well. So if it doesn't work we'll add to this um, number that make sure it's got enough to, to work with now we're going to go over the mini step and work in the the step of them so this is going to be the main loop so we'll just type that there. main loop uh, we can get rid of this this is kind of annoying uh, and what this is going to do is this is going to run every single step um, hence why it's called a step event and we're going to use a switch statement we're going to switch mini step we just there's not going to be an S there get rid of that um, so we're going to switch mini step and what this is going to enable us to do is to have several stages within our generation so this is going to run every main step but then within this we're going to have separate events that run at different times for example, case zero, which is what it's going to start with, is the very first population. So this is only going to run once. This is going to make our initial population. And then we're just from every generation onwards, we're just going to go straight to case one. Case one, I'm trying to remember what these are now. Uh, we might have to switch to the completed version. Case one is running the first population. So this is going to be not much code in this section. The majority of it is going to be in the draw event. Um, but this is also going to control the movement. Um, it's going to control the, the drawing of the objects. This is going to be the main one, to be honest. It's going to be a lot less in the other ones. Um, for example, the first population is just going to generate um, a set of random instructions for it. It's also important with these switch events to make sure when you put case zero, for example, you need to put break afterwards. Otherwise, this will just keep running all the way through and it won't uh, stop afterwards. So we're going to have case two, which I believe is calculated the fittest. We'll just check there. Now, I want to make sure this is done properly. Yeah, calculate the fittest. But we're going to skip that one out. Actually, we're going to actually put this into case one instead. 
Um, so this next step is going to be insert fittest we'll put that in, directly into population. So in most scenarios, um, what you want to do is have your I've actually got this written on uh, there, but you have the first population. You then make that first population move. You then calculate the fittest, which is going to be in here as well. Well, we'll just put that underneath so we remember. Then we directly add the fittest into the population. Then case three is where we mutate them and add random generations. Um, so we've got add, add fittest, yeah, make child populations. So what we're going to do in this step is we're going to take the fittest gene, so to speak. So the set of instructions it's been given, generated at the start, and it's going to randomize this slightly. Um, and then from that, it's going to then calculate the next most efficient from that selection. So over time, natural selection means that the fittest survives and then the most efficient route is eventually created. Case four, this is just going to be our reset. So we're just going to reset loads of variables and then well, we'll just write this in now actually. We're just going to skip back to mini step equals one. So we're going to then run our next population. So that's pretty simple for the moment. Um, I don't think there's anything crazy going on right now. It's also worth noting with the switch events is that it's not going to just go boom, 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 boom like that. It's not going to just go straight away. We're going to have this one run instantly. Then this one, we're going to have our alarm. So it's going to wait for 10 seconds. And then we're going to move on to this one. Then we're going to move on to this one, this one, and then straight back to one. Where again, it waits a bit. So it's going to wait a bit on case one. And that's why we're using a switch event instead of just running straight code, which would work. But I think in this way it works better, personally. Anyway, we're going to start coding the switch mini set. So to start off with, we do need to make a, a variable or something. Um, yeah, we're going to make our AI population array. So I did say before, we are going to be using arrays in this series. Um, just to switch it up a little bit, because we have used a lot of DS grids in the past. Um, so we're, we're going to run with some arrays. To do arrays, the, the way I've found most efficient, again, this is probably not right because I'm not amazing at arrays, but um, the way I've done it is to start with a for loop like this. We're going to just have it loop through every population, like so. And then we're going to reset um, the AI directions, which is going to be our new array. So we're going to reset all of them to minus one. Why not? Uh, it's empty effectively. So with AI directions, we are actually going to have a 2D array. Um, just trying to remember which way around it is. So it's going to be this way. So we're going to need another variable here. So the variable here is going to be the max steps. We're going to call it max. We'll, we'll see what we put it here just for consistency. Uh, we did we did call it max steps. <laughs> uh, max steps equals 50. So once we exceed that, we're going to stop. And for this, we're going to have a, another for loop. We're in fact going to copy this one. Into here, we're just going to change this to H and the YH. I just like H along with I. Um, and instead of population size, we're going to change this to max steps. We're then going to indent the whole thing and close it off like that. We're also going to, because this is 2D, make it 2D like that. Um, I believe that was right. Yeah. Uh, so what this is doing is making a 2D array with the 
width being population size and the height being max steps. And this is AI direction. So this is an array that's going to hold for each individual user in the population um, a set of instructions for each individual step, which that step then gets run here. So for the very first population, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. We're going to be using that a lot. So it might be worth just copying that permanently. Um, then I kind of forget what we do. Oh yeah, we, we just made the first step, that's the one. Uh, so we take our AI directions and we use our I and then zero because that's our first initial step. And then we do, this is uh, going to be a little bit weird. Uh, degree to rad which basically takes uh, degrees and turns it to radians it's not necessary uh, all the time we, we could just put random range pi to negative or negative pi to pi but for the sake of this it makes more sense in my head to do it this way you could do whatever you want in reality so what this does is it takes a direction now the direction has to be in radians because that's mainly how directions work. They don't really work great with um, degrees. And we're gonna take our degrees from minus 180 to 180, so effectively it encompasses 100, 360. And we're just gonna convert that into degrees, or to, to radians. Uh, and set that to a variable, so now we can when we come to this run first population, we can just take this, say, move in that direction, and then we'll randomize some of the next directions. So anyway, if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, or just do as you want to do, and I'll talk to you in the next one.